Is it just us? Or does this feel like we're watching the slowest end of the world possible? I mean, like in the movies, the end of the world's pretty quick, the apocalypse. But this is like we're watching in paint dry. Now we have Hamas attacking Israel, Israel attacking Gaza. We have Syria and Iran allegedly getting involved. China, Russia, America, Europe, everybody wants in on this. I know what you're saying. What the f are you talking about the end of the world? I'm talking about global nuclear destruction. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Here's one way the end of the world might come. So the fair use as it's a parody. If you don't have a sense of humor, go f Welcome. Is this my reality? Is this your reality? So what is the Samson option? What is the truth about Israel's secret nuclear arsenal? Don't tell anyone. Let's be honest, Israel's been stealing nuclear secrets and covertly making bombs since the 50s. And Western governments, including Britain and the United States, turns a blind eye. Of course they do. Support this content. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. Let's join together and stop World War III. The Samson option, as it's called, is the name that some military analysts and authors have given to Israel's deterrent strategy of massive retaliation with nuclear weapons as a, quote, last resort against a country whose military has invaded and or destroyed much of Israel. The name is in reference to a biblical Israelite judge, Samson, who pushed apart the pillars of the Philistine temple, bringing down the roof and killing himself and thousands of Philistines who had captured him, crying out, let me die with the Philistines. Those goddamn Philistines. This is the worst kept secret. Israel to this day refuses to confirm or deny that they have nuclear weapons or to tell us how they would use them. Now, this is known as nuclear opacity. This has made it difficult for anybody outside of Israel to describe the country's true nuclear policy. However, to be honest, over the years, Israeli leaders have publicly acknowledged their country's nuclear capability. But what do we know? As early as 1976, the CIA, if you can believe them, said that Israel possessed anywhere from 10 to 20 nuclear weapons. But by 2002, it was estimated that number had increased to between 75 and 200 thermonuclear weapons, each one in the multiple megaton range. Kevin S. Browner has estimated that as many as 400 nuclear weapons, these can be launched from land, sea, and air. This gives Israel a second strike option, even if much of the country is already just destroyed. The fuck was that? The original conception of the Samson option was only as a deterrence, but how close did we come? Okay, here's something that's a little creepy. In an article titled The Last Secret of the Six Day War, the New York Times reported that in the days before the 1967 Six Day War, Israel get this plan to insert a team of paratroopers by helicopter into the Sinai. Their mission was to set up and remote detonate a nuclear bomb on a mountaintop as a warning to the belligerent surrounding states. <laughs> sounds, sounds reasonable. The greatly outnumbered Jewish state in a surprising turn of events effectively eliminated the Egyptian Air Force and occupied the Sinai, winning the war before the test could even be set up. Retired Israel Brigadier General Ishtak Yaakov referred to this operation as Israeli Samson Option. And then in 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, the Arab forces were overwhelming Israeli forces and Prime Minister Golda Meir authorized a nuclear alert. She ordered 13 nuclear bombs to be ready for use by missiles and aircraft. 
the Israeli ambassador informed then President Nixon, I'm not a crook, that very serious conclusions may occur if the United States did not airlift supplies. Nixon, of course, complied. This is seen by some commentators on the subject as the first threat of the use of the Samson option. Yeah, they threatened us and we did what they said. Go figure. The truth is, Israel's been building nuclear weapons for well over 30 years. The Israelis understand what passive and powerless acceptance of doom has meant for them in the past. And they know who their good neighbors are, okay? And they've ensured that that shit isn't gonna happen again. Now, I don't wanna worry any of you, but it seems like for the first time in history, a people facing extermination while the world either cackles or looks away, unlike the Armenians, the Libyans, World War II European Jews, or the Rwandans. These people have the power to destroy the whole world. Is that the ultimate justice? Is that gonna be the ultimate fuck you? So let's sum it up like this. In 2003, a military historian, Martin Van Krebold, was quoted in David Hurst's The Gun in the Olive Branches saying, we, Israel, possess several hundred atomic warheads and rockets. We can launch them at targets in all directions perhaps even at Rome. Most European capitals are targets for our Air Force. Let me quote General Moshe Dayan. I know I said that wrong, but anyway. Israel must be like a mad dog, too dangerous to bother. He goes on, our armed forces, however, are not the 30th strongest in the world, but rather the second or the third. We have the capability to take the world down with us. And I assure you that that will happen before Israel goes under. So what do you think? Do you think Israel has the right to use the Samson option? Or do you think this is batshit crazy and I don't think anybody should destroy the whole fucking world? Leave a comment down below. Let's get the fuck out of here.